Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna explore adaptive themes, settings and configuration options. Now, this isn't going to be the definitive how to use layouts or how to use all of these features, but it's going to cover a little bit about what adaptive theme just has to offer out of the box. So check it out, let's get going right now. So in the last video, we showed you a little bit of the code with adaptive theme. We created our sub theme and we got going. So now what we wanna do is talk a little bit about uh, what comes with adaptive theme in the settings here. So if we come to settings, so as you can see, we have some layout options. Now uh, we are first able to choose the sidebar position now, I didn't actually have my sub theme layout working at first. Uh, I had to come in here and click save configuration. After that, when I refreshed, uh, it actually started clicking in. So if, if your layout doesn't show up, maybe click save on appearance here and it's going to start using these layouts. So as you can see with no configuration here, let's, uh, I'm gonna open up inspect this element just to be able to change the width here. So as you can see, we now have this main theme that uh, is actually already responsive out of the box and you get some, some font size text changes. You go um, from two columns to one column. And in addition, we have some options here, whether we want a left and right sidebar, or we want two left sidebars, or sidebars on the right. Now we can go ahead and select uh, sidebars on the left. We can refresh, and you're not gonna see a whole lot's changed because the sidebar on the left already existed. However, if we were to inspect this main content area right here, you'd see that it's taking up a considerable amount more space. Now, if we come to appearance, you'll see that there's some percentages here. We have the first sidebar is 25%, the second sidebar is 25%, and the main, the rest of the page is going to be taking up just the remainder. Now, the page width is going to be set to 100%, so it's going to be a fluid change rather than a pixel-based change. If you wanted this to only be a pixel-based change, you would have to change this unit to pixels or Ms, and then you can set a max width. Now, a uh, max width of 1140 is kind of old-fashioned. I'm gonna do 1440 just to give it a little bit more space on the larger monitors. Now, when we click Save, let's come back to our theme. And as you can see, refreshing, it's already giving it that more space here. So without having to dive into the code, we're already managing to change our layout a bit. Now this video isn't going to be the definitive guide to these layouts. We're gonna cover these considerably more, but just know in the settings here, you can change the standard layout, the tablet layout, um, and you'll notice down here, it says that this layout is triggered by the media query uh, 581 between and 768. So as long as your browser device width is between 581 and 768, it will be getting uh, the tablet layout. And nowadays, this is going to encompass a lot of phones as well. So it's not necessarily a tablet. It's, you know, all sorts of devices in that pixel range. So keep that in mind uh, because phones are a lot larger than the old iPhone was, uh, which of course was 32. So we now have a small touch phone, which is uh, smaller phones and allows you to set the layouts for those as well. And whether you want your sidebar stacking or left and right. In addition, we have some panels and G panels information here. We're not going to be using panels or G panels with this, so we're not going to worry about that just yet. However, if the demand is there, I might dive into that stuff too. Now under global settings, you can change whether you want this to be mobile or desktop first. Now I would recommend not checking this. Mobile first is the way to go. So uh, by all means, you can check it if you absolutely would like to. I would prefer to uh, develop mobile first and then you could disable a responsive layout as well and something i'm also not going to recommend uh, because of course um, google is now even penalizing sites that don't look good on mobile so if you haven't been developing responsive websites by now which is hard to believe you should be developing responsive websites that's all there is to it Okay, next we have uh, file management, it allows you to uh, have the location of your public files. 
So as you can see, generated files are going to be contained within adaptive theme level up files. And then you are allowed to combine aggregate files. So we can click combine CSS and combine JS files. Now, you might say to do this, however, there are some good modules for Drupal for aggregating and combining your JS files already. Or personally, I might not have the site do it. In another video or two, I'm going to show you how to get going with something like Gulp, certainly using some sort of other additional build process. The one of which I'm going to show you is going to be Gulp. And don't worry about that. I will provide a default file that you can use as a drop-in replacement for Adaptive Themes SAS features. So let's go ahead and click CSS, which again just gives you some information about the CSS aggregation, which just gives you some more information about this CSS aggregation. It allows you to enable some custom media queries as well. That way you can have some overlapped media queries if you'd like. I mean, personally, when I'm developing a site, it's gonna be more heavily in the CSS than it is going to be clicking through these uh, settings menus. However, for site administrators, these tools are really nice. Now, polyfills uh, HTML5 support with the HTML5 shiv is definitely going to need to be checked. Like it says, turning this off is bad news for IE 6 through 8. If you don't need to support 6 through 8, then go right ahead. Now, several other things. You can fix some rounding errors in 6 and 7. Nobody's using IE 6 or 7. If anything, you should probably just have to support 8, so I wouldn't check this. Uh, media support. Media query support for six and six through eight with respond.js. Um, I would probably check this if you need to support IE8, but only if you absolutely need to. And then responsive JavaScript. You can notice that it is de uh, deprecated. We saw the script in there at mediaqueries.js. It allows you to just use some media queries in your JavaScript themselves. And a scale fix for iOS. Uh, there's a bug here. We could always check that if we need it. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it unchecked. Now, meta tags allows you to have the viewport device initial scale 1.0, which is what you're going to want so that your mobile devices actually display the responsive site correctly. Other than that, I would probably just leave this as is. Now, debuggers, we can have highlighting regions, we can show window size, and we can run the sub theme compatibility test. You can also load your panels. Let's go ahead and click save configuration and sort of see what this does. Now, when we refresh, you can see that all of your regions, although they're labeled with these sort of obnoxious boxes in front of them, I wish uh, that was as easy as a toggle on your uh, interface here, sort of like Omega. Uh, however, it's not. We just have these annoying region boxes on top of our content. But other than that, it shows you uh, exactly where all of your regions are, so you can visually tell, and it makes it nice for really understanding what's going on with this layout here. And we get a uh, constant output of the browser windows dimensions here. Next we have extensions and the additional extensions that come here are something that we're going to go over in a future video. Now down here we just have our toggle display settings which is something that you've seen in almost every single theme where we can uncheck logo and it will get rid of our logo, uncheck site slogan, it'll get rid of that, user pictures and comments, verification, stuff like that and logo image settings where you can click use default logo and this use default logo we can actually uncheck this and upload our own logo if we'd like or we can just keep this checked and then replace that file with our logo file itself and shortcut icons likewise we can do the same thing or give it paths to new files okay i'm going to come back to these debuggers i'm going to untoggle these like so i'm going to save our configuration and there we have it. We have our adaptive theme. It's responsive. It's ready to go. And we're going to get started uh, actually theming this thing very soon. So in the next video, I'm going to cover a little bit about the SAS setup. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.